guys, Jeremy here with Simple Little Life, and I've got a very special video for you here. Uh, a few months ago, Steve over at Green Beetle, I'll put a link to his channel up here, he'd contacted me about doing a YouTube collaboration, and I was stoked. Um, we kind of shot some ideas back and forth, and we came up with that uh, we're going to do a knife making videos on some type of style of cleaver. And so we've each made one. Um, you can check out his video on the one that he made. His process is a lot different than mine. He's very talented at blacksmithing and forging, and it's really cool to watch his channel he's got so much you can learn so if you haven't subscribed to him yet do so now and then you can watch this video and I make another uh, cleaver as well now there's some footage of my knife that is in his video that I won't share with my video and there's some footage of his knife that he's not sharing in his video but it's in my video just to try and get some cross viewing and really let's uh, help these charities out you can buy one of these cleavers if you win the eBay auction and all 100% of the proceeds are going to a charity and uh, thanks a lot Steve for this idea I thought it was fantastic I had a lot of fun doing it and uh, yeah, let's get right into it. All right, just the way I like to start most of my knife builds, I like to get a, uh, a template cut out of wood of the pattern that I've drawn out and then I'll shape that and just so I can get a good sense of what it's actually gonna feel like in my hand. And then once I've got that profile, uh, the feeling how I like it in the hand, I'll take that and uh, lay it onto the steel that I'm going to use and transfer the design to that. This is a piece of 3 16 one tool steel. And from there we'll take it over the, uh, with my portable bandsaw and make a little cutting table for it. And I'll just cut out the profile roughly uh, with the bandsaw. And this bandsaw is very quickly becoming one of my favorite tools. Uh, it's just amazing how good of a job it does when you're just roughing out the profile of the knife and even a lot of the little detailed work is really quite slick with this tool. And then we'll take it over the belt grinder and finish the profiling and the shaping of the knife. And then I put my 10-inch contact wheel on and I'll use that to finish up some of the, the detailed profiling on the spine of the blade. And over to the spindle sander uh, just to finish up the inside, the large finger troil there. And uh, eventually when I get my new belt grinder built, I'll probably get rid of this tool. But for now, uh, this is what I use to profile the all the finger grooves and trolls and stuff of my blades. And here I'm just going to lay out a hole uh, that's going to go in the blade. This is more just uh, for the aesthetics of it. And drill that out. And then I'll take my little deburring tool and just deburr that out. Uh, later on I actually hit this with a, a large countersink bit just to make it look a little better in the finished knife. And then I'll lay down a line of black sharpie and uh, I'll take a drill bit that is the same diameter as the material thickness I'm using. I use that to scratch the lines that I'm going to grind uh, the edge to. And now we're ready to grind in our bevel. Uh, for this knife I'm going to do a hollow grind on a 10 inch contact wheel and I do use a grinding jig just to make sure I get really nice crispy lines. And now we're grinding the other side of the knife. And then I finish up both bevels with a surface conditioning belt. Uh, think of this as pretty much just like a Scotch-Brite belt. Looks nice and crispy to me. And I'm going to put a Spanish choil in the blade. I really like these because it gives a definite stop to the edge of the blade. Uh, it makes it easier for sharpening and I, I personally just like the aesthetics of it too. I have done this in my milling machine in the past but here I'm just using my files because often it's quicker rather than setting up the milling machine stuff like that and it, it gets a good result too. It's quite easy to do. And there you can see that notch. Now let's head over and take a look at what Steve's been up to. Uh, this was a pickaxe that started out he was supposed to put a new handle on it for his, his dad but 
he ended up turning it into a cleaver for this project instead and uh, you'll see what the finished product uh, I think it was a wise decision uh, he puts a lot of work into his knives and uh, forging and it's a completely different uh, approach to knife making than stock removal method that I use so very fascinating to watch someone who's learning this and getting good at that stuff and then back to this cleaver now uh, I'm just laying out the holes where my pins are gonna go I like to drill my two main pin holes first and I'll follow that up with drilling a bunch of random holes just to lighten up the handle a little bit and uh, try and give the knife a little bit more balance. Then I'll just go over all those holes with a countersink uh, just to clean up the edges there. And now we'll get busy with some sandpaper here and uh, just give the, the blade a nicer finish before we send it off to heat treat. Clean up any scratches or uh, dings that we may have put onto the knife in the previous processes. Now I completely forgot to shoot video of me putting in uh, to the heat treat oven, but uh, I did 1475 for 10 minutes and then quenched it in canola oil as this is an O1, which is an oil hardening tool steel. And then I put it in the toaster oven, uh, 450 degrees for 20 minutes and I do two temper cycles. And then we'll take it back to the surface conditioning belt and uh, just clean up some of that scale that was left on from the heat treating process and more sanding get everything all nice and cleaned up uh, at this point we're kind of getting everything ready for scales get it ready to be clued up and also I want to make sure I get the final finish on a lot of the parts of the knife because once you put the handles on uh, it renders a lot of the areas inaccessible for sanding and, and fine finishing so at this point the knife is getting fairly well detailed now I've gotten a lot of comments about these little mini cleavers I make, uh, guys saying that, well, that's not a cleaver, and uh, technically I guess it's not. Um, however, it's got a very close resemblance, and you know, I don't, I don't necessarily have the means to make a very large cleaver. I don't have stock that's that size, so for the sake of this, we're doing uh, cleavers of different variations of it, so you know, you can refrain from your wise comments. Uh, I know technically it's not a cleaver, but it has resemblance to it. Uh, yes, it's a sheep's foot style blade, but I'm calling it a mini cleaver, and uh, since I made the knife, I guess I'm entitled to do so. So a few unifying themes that we'd wanted to give these blades, uh, first one being some type of a cleaver style knife, and the second one we decided we would use uh, black micarta for the handles. And so this is a 3 8 canvas micarta, and I'm just cutting that on the port band And then for my blade, I decided I was gonna do some liners as well. So I've got orange G10 liners, and when I'm using liners like this, I like to glue them to the scale material. Uh, it makes it easier uh, when you're drilling your holes and lining things up. You're working with just one piece rather than two pieces on each side of your knife. So here I'm just sanding everything, getting it roughed up. Uh, it'll help the, epo the epoxy bond better and we'll end up with just one piece to work with for each side of the blade. And once we've let those harden up uh, and dry, then I can square everything up and true it all up, sand off the edges and get everything nice and neat and ready to, to uh, mark for our holes and stuff. And here we're just drilling the holes for the pins. An important tip is when you're drilling your second or maybe third pin hole in your scale material, uh, use the pins uh, to line everything up. That way you've got uh, holes that are perfectly true uh, between all the different pieces. So. Here we're just cutting the uh, handles out, kind of uh, after we've traced out the shape of the, the knife onto them. Don't mind that piece of fly tape hanging down, that's, that's great. And now we'll kind of get the, uh, the scales brought down very closely to the profile of the tang of the knife. The uh, reason for that is I'm doing some different type of contouring on this one. And um, 
I just want to make sure those are traced, uh, follow the lines of the tang very well. And then here I'll just kind of mark out that same curve so I follow it around so it's kind of one organic line as it comes across uh, the blade. And then we'll drive out the pins that we're holding the two pieces together. And then here I'm just drawing out some lines that I'm going to end up profiling too. Uh, I like to give myself different measurements and for that I'll actually just use the thickness of like markers and I shim it up with a piece of Kydex there. Uh, that way when I'm grinding and profiling I've actually got lines to go to and it gives it much more uh, concentric look to the knife to both sides of the handle scales. And for this one I'm doing a lot of profiling on the scales before glue up just because of the shape. You, you'll see it at the end there. It's, it would be very difficult to get this profiling done uh, with the scales on the knife so I need to get them as close as possible before I actually glue the scales to the, to the knife. Give it one final check, make sure it's all how I want it to be before I glue it up. And I'm not going to show the gluing the handle scales on. Uh, it's mix epoxy and put them on, clamp it down. And uh, here we can see how Steve has uh, mounted his scales. He used copper rivets, I do believe, and peened them over there. It looks really classy. And then after glue up, we can take it down. The pins are still sticking out, so those need to be ground flush. And then we'll do our final cleanup on the scales using a Fordham here to get the profiles really nice and neat and smooth. Also back to the oscillating spindle sander for a little bit of touch up. And then I'm using these, uh, whoops, fluted belts. Uh, they kind of got waves on the edges of them. They're really slick because they, they don't bite in when you're dealing with contours and stuff. And I'm finding them to be super, super uh, handy for, for profiling scales and getting inside curves and stuff like that. This is actually a one inch belt, uh, which is good. And then I switch up to the two inch belt as I get closer to the end. See so some of the detailing there gets you fairly close to the finished blade and uh, kind of nerve wracking, but if you're careful, uh, hopefully you don't scratch up the part of your blade that's finished already. And then we'll hit that up with some sandpaper and do the final finishing touches by hand. And we end up going through a lot of sandpaper. And once we've got the handle sanded down the way we want it, we can put the final buff on. Now sometimes when you're buffing, you'll find places that you missed with your sandpaper, and you have to go back and fix those up, but this one was uh, pretty good, turned out well, so this was the final buff. And here we can see the final product here, it's all done. Now why don't we check in with Steve and uh, see how his cleaver turned out. Hey guys, Steve with Green Beetle. Thanks so much to Jeremy for this collaboration video and putting these cleavers together. They'll both be auctioned for charity. Um, so I make a lot of knives out of some mystery metals and you never know what you're going to get. Even though some steels are hardenable, it doesn't mean they have good edge retention. It's not going to be the case here. This thing, this is the third 2x4 I've chopped through and it's going to shave some arm hair. So that's pretty sweet. There's some other issues with the steel here. You can go to my channel to check that out that make me say, this knife is going to have to be decorative and I'm going to retire the edge prior to the uh, auction and whoever gets it just cannot sharpen and use it. Go to my channel, check out a little more on why that is. But uh, thanks again guys. See ya. Alright, so there uh, you check over to Steve's channel, uh, Green Beetle. I'll put a link in the description below. Also in the description below will be a link to the uh, eBay charity auction. Uh, for these blades and uh, thanks again to Steve this was a lot of fun I thoroughly enjoyed it and uh, you know chance to give back and hopefully you guys can see different techniques and processes highly recommend you check out Steve's channel he does some really cool things there and uh, I've learned a lot from him and just watching his videos I'm I'm on the hunt for an anvil and a forge now so thanks for watching guys cheers <laughs>